welcome to A&E TV. Today we're joined for morning coffee by the founders of Keep Eat Real, Maria and Nadine. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Thank you for coming. I'd like to kick things off by talking through your morning routine. So my morning routine is, I think, quite different than Maria's. I wake up relatively early. Um, so I'm usually up around five, six. Um, my, I think first hour is relatively sacred for me. So I do a lot of my sort of breathing, meditation and, and journaling within the first hour. If I'm energized, I get to exercise a bit. Um, but usually I like to have that morning sort of just to plan my day as well after um, and just gets me started okay. for the day. Yeah. How about so you? I'm the total opposite. I'm not a morning person at all. Um, so it takes me a bit of time to snooze the alarm before I get out of bed and then I need about half an hour of silence, a cup of coffee before I actually even say hello, good morning and then the day starts usually. Perfect, so coffee is the main element of your morning. <laughs> and silence. <Okay. laughs> um, and do you want to start by talking us through the motivation behind um, Keep Eat Real? Yeah, so Keep It Real initially started as a blog. Um, we mainly wanted to tell people how to eat healthy in a flexible way and show them that healthy eating doesn't necessarily mean that they need to be you know, sit sitting at home. It doesn't need to be about restriction. Um, we wanted healthy eating to show them how it's it's practical, flexible, and social. So we started initially blogging about where to eat healthy around Dubai, what to pick out of a menu, uh, how to cook at home in a healthy way. And then we started getting uh, approached by a few FNB concepts, asking them to create healthy lines and also endorsing their products. Uh, that's where we realized that there was a gap in the market for a nutrition consultancy for the FNB. Uh, so we decided to, you know, take the plunge, quit our jobs, um, register Keep It Real as a proper business. And now we service the FNB. We help them create healthier lines and we help them gain credibility and trust with their clients because they have that dietitian approved uh, seal of approval for their menus. And indirectly, that actually ends up going back to our initial mission, which is offering the community healthier options. Amazing. And then... Um in your opinion, what is the importance of clean eating and educating this region in particular? So, I mean, I think healthy eating and clean eating, these words are being thrown around so loosely these days. Everything is about clean eating and healthy. And at the end of the day, what is healthy for me is not healthy for you. And the importance of personalized nutrition is, is really, really important. Like, I cannot stress more on that. Yeah. Um, it's so important that I mean, we really do educate the people on, first of all, not following fad diets, not following quick fixes, uh, the importance of them really being critical of the media, of the food industry, because even though you see that trend of, you know, healthier food options and healthy eating, we're still seeing a huge rise of obesity and eating disorders as well. Um, so this is where the importance of education falls in and the importance of telling people to really go back to basics, like go back to eating natural food, wholesome food. Uh, moderation is so important. Um, balance is important and no restriction or, you know, rigidity when it comes to eating or over obsession when it comes to clean eating. Mm, definitely. And launching your company, what's been the biggest challenge you've had to overcome to get there? To be honest, we've had a few. I think last year for us was probably one of our most challenging years. Um, if I was to sort of pinpoint maybe one or two challenges, I think we also had the opportunity to, to launch two startups at the same time, which, you know, I think if we look back, it was a bit crazy of us to do initially, but it was an opportunity we, we sort of didn't want to miss. Um, I think the challenge there was time and focus and actually putting our effort and time in the right places, um, in the right sort of um, requirements that were needed. Um, another sort of challenge we face is budget constraints um, that probably restricted us from doing certain things that we wanted to do, marketing, our, marketing ourselves in a way that um, sort of you know, em empowered us to do the things that we personally wanted to do. So we said this year is is, is more of a year of change for us um, because we're redirecting um, our efforts and our focus and our thoughts into actually making our business grow the way we personally want it to grow. Okay. And you've achieved so much already with Keep Eat Well. 
What's what's in store for the next year or the years ahead for you? Um, so we're actually like at the moment in the in the midst of sort of rebranding slightly our brand um, and creating um, a bit of an uplift uh, as such. So that's sort of one thing we're working on at the moment. Another thing is also um, ideally trying to digitalize certain certain services that we have for Keep It Real because um, everyone's just you know moving into that uh, phase as well. And we're also like trying to see how we can expand to other regions in the market as well you know Dubai has been great for us um, but we also come from different parts of the world so ideally we want to see what's also out there um, from that front. Lovely and either professionally or in your personal life do you have a motto that you live by? Um, I personally think everything happens for a reason and even if you don't understand why this is happening eventually you realize it's probably for a good reason so things sort of have a way of falling into place. Definitely. Pretty similar. Um, and it's really also trusting, just really trusting that process and the journey that, you know, you're going through with the ups and downs and just, you know, getting the learnings from that and just really trusting and having faith that things are just meant to be. Definitely. And how about if you could um, give your younger self one piece of advice, what would that be? Uh, well, OK, I think for me, at least, definitely to take more risks. Um, I think I took risks a bit later in life and a bit more calculated. Um, so yeah, it's just do it. <laughs> cool. And I would think maybe don't dwell on the small things and the bigger picture. A lot of these things, we waste so much time and effort and energy stressing out and dwelling on things that on the bigger picture, they don't really matter at the end of the day. And how about what do you say no to even work or in life? You know, we, it's interesting because we were saying this yesterday, we we're trying to figure out like, I've gotten better at saying no, if you know, and I think we're we're sort of, you know, looked upon like we should, you know, we should always say yes and so on. And I think a lot of it has to do with my energy and my gut feeling. And so if I just if I if I truly tune in to my intuition, my gut, and if something really doesn't feel right or doesn't, I think I've learned to to sort of say no to a certain situation and no to a certain um, maybe energy or or, or, or or person, for example. So I've really had to tap in a bit deeper to to be able to sort of, you know, say no when I have to. <laughs> Um, I would usually say no to negativity and like drama because a lot more happens when you're a bit more positive and anything that's unethical we're usually very very no about. So. Okay and this will be our last question for today. How would you like the world to remember you? Oh wow. Um, I think you know you go through different stages of your life and each let's say stage when we were in early 20s or late and you know now in the 30s, I feel my life purpose has, has sort of changed slightly um, just because I'm growing as a person, our business is growing. So ultimately, and I think that's also one of the reasons we've started Ke Keep It Real is to really create some sort of an impact, um, an impact where um, obviously it's a positive impact, but uh, you know, I'm allowing the community to grow in a way that through our services, through our um, sort of our ethos, um, I'm just creating a bit of a more positive impact onto this world, you know, so it's just creating something different. Yeah, I mean, that that's a really hard question. Yeah. Um, I mean, on, yeah, I think it's just what Nadine said, basically. So um, we do want to be remembered as, you know, uh, on a professional front, we want to be remembered as the dietitians that are fun, not boring, trendy. We don't believe in diets, and a lot of people who've worked with us know that. Um, we really do believe in a flexible approach to eating and eating what you want when you want from that sense. On a personal front, I think we also just want to be remembered as, you know, fun loving, passionate, uh, hard working people. Definitely. And I'm sure you will. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having us. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.